Okay, this is Math 1090, Section 2.3 on Matrix Operations. Okay, as usual, we'll start with some definitions. We've already seen this definition, but it's a good review. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers arranged into rows and columns. And we have several examples of matrices here. Notice the entries in a matrix can be any real number. They could be decimal, they could be fractions, they could be real numbers like pi, anything. The dimensions of a matrix are a description of its size and are given by two numbers, m by n, indicating m rows and n columns. And, and this is something that's been agreed upon by mathematicians all over the world. We use this row column convention. This convention where we always refer to the row, the number of rows first, and then the number of columns. Okay. The entries of a matrix A are identified as A sub I J, where I indicates the row and J indicates the column of that entry. So for example, um, you'll see here this element of the matrix is in row two in column one, so it has subscript um, two one. We, and we would read it as a sub two one. Okay, um, here's a simple exercise. Given the matrix A, question A, what are the dimensions of matrix A? Well, this has, let's see, four rows and five columns. So this is a four by five matrix. And part B, what value is in A sub two four? So we always go by this row column convention. Row two is here and column four would be this column. So it's this element right here. So it's the number five. Okay, um, so in this section what we're going to see when we talk about matrix operations, what we're talking about is arithmetic. We can add and subtract and later we'll see how to multiply and even divide matrices. Okay, so the addition and subtraction of matrices is only possible when the matrices have the same dimensions. We can add or subtract two three by three matrices, but we cannot add or subtract a two by three matrix and a three by three matrix, because some entries in one matrix will not have a corresponding, corresponding entry in the other matrix. So here we have two matrices and we're asked to compute the sum of the following matrices. So um, A plus B Notice they're both three by three matrices, so the sum will also be three by three, and we just do the addition pairwise. So we take the first element, um, whoops, we take the first element of matrix A, the A sub one one element, and we pair it up with the B sub one one element, add them together, and we get the um, we could call this matrix C, the C sub one one element. Okay, and then we take the element in the, the A sub one two element, pair it with the B sub one two element, negative 10 plus 10 is zero. And we get the C sub one two element, and so on and so forth. So negative two and three sums to one. Now I'll move on to the next row. Four and one is five. Two and two is four. 0 and 1 is 1, and then the third row, 4 and negative 5 is negative 1, negative 2 and positive 2 is 0, 2 and negative 2 is 0. All right, so addition of matrices couldn't be simpler. It's just exactly what you would imagine it would be. Okay, um, before we get into how we multiply two matrices, there's another idea here called scalar multiplication of matrices. 
Scalar multiplication involves multiplying each entry in a matrix by a scalar. Um, scalar here refers to a, just a real number. Okay, so now we now that we're, we're talking about these matrices or grids of numbers, we've got to be careful our, uh, about what we're talking about. And so we introduce this new term scalar to represent a number that is just a single number as opposed to a grid or matrix of numbers or a vector of numbers, right? So, um, as you can see from the definition below here, C times A is just uh, defined to be, you take that scalar C and you take and you multiply every single entry in the matrix by that scalar and you get a new matrix. Okay, so for example here in the exercise we're asked to multiply the matrix A by the scalar 3. Um, so this does not change the dimensionality of our matrix. So we're just going to do 3 times 8 is 24, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times 4 is 12. Okay, and so that's just scalar multiplication of a matrix. Here's another exercise. Compute the scalar sum 3a plus 2b. Um, maybe it isn't exactly a scalar. It's a, I think maybe a better phrase here would be compute the scaled sum of two matrices. But whatever. Okay, so let's uh, do the scaling first. The, the first matrix, when I multiply every entry by 3, I'm going to get 3, negative 6, 0 for the first row. The second row, I'm going to get 0, negative 3, positive 6. Third row, I'm going to get 12, 9, negative 18. Okay. And to this, I will add the next scaled matrix. And this addition is defined. It makes sense because both matrices are 3 by 3. So let's see. I multiply the first row by 2. I get negative 2, 4, 2. When I scale the second row, I get 0, negative 6, 4. And when I scale the third row, I get 0, 2, 8. Alright. Now I'm going to sum the two matrices and just add corresponding entries from both matrices. So this um, element, this first entry in the, uh, the first row, first column. Again, I take the f element in the first row, first column from the matrix on the left and I take the element or entry from the first row, first column from the matrix on the right, add them together. 3 plus negative 2 is 1. So the, the entry in the sum at that <clears throat> location will be 1. Okay, and now I'm just going to continue with this process row by row. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. Uh, next row, 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 3 plus negative 6 is negative 9. 6 plus 4 is 10. And now the third row, 12 plus 0 is 12. 9 plus 2 is 11. Negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10. All right, and there we go. We can sum matrices. Okay, let's get to the more interesting stuff where we multiply matrices together. Okay, now an important thing to know is that you can't just multiply any two matrices together. It really only, the way we're going to define multiplication, um, you'd think, you know, maybe you do it like multiplication, or sorry, addition, where you just do it entry by entry. And you could do, do uh, define multiplication to be that. Oh, I'm recording during a thunderstorm and I just heard thunder. Um, 
but we don't define multiplication that way. I mean, um, actually, in some applications, uh, you it is defined that way, but uh, that's a that's advanced mathematics that we're not going to do here. Um, instead, we're going to define the matrix multiplication. Um, well, you'll see, and it'll make sense in the context of tables of data. Okay, but let's just define it first. So, the product of two matrices. Finding the product of two matrices is only possible when the inner dimensions are the same meaning that the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Okay, so if A is an M by R matrix and B is an R by N matrix, then the product matrix AB is an M by N matrix. For example, the product AB is possible because the number of columns in A is the same as the number of rows in B. If the inner dimensions do not match, the product is not defined. Okay? So here, uh, if we want to multiply matrix A, which has dimensions 2 by 3, with matrix B, which has dimensions 3 by 3, this is defined because the two when you put those dimensions together, we call these two numbers the inner dimensions because they're on the inside of the product there. Since they match, since they are the same, this, this product is defined. And we could call, whoa, we, that was close. We could call the product matrix C and it will have dimensions of these outer numbers. So C will be a whoops. C will be a 2 by 3 matrix. Okay? There we go. Yeah. So furthermore, the outside dimensions tell us the product AB, which I'm calling C, will be a 2 by 3 matrix. Okay. Then the product AB is calculated as follows. So this looks extremely complicated and it looks like, oh my gosh, look at all those subscripts on the numbers. It would be impossible to remember this, but not at all. It's actually fairly simple once you understand the basic pattern. So what is the basic pattern? Okay. Well, notice this is a, this is a, two by three matrix we have two rows and three columns okay now where where do I get this look at this big long sum of a entries and B entries how do I get this well this is the element in the first row and first column of the product matrix okay so to generate this element what I do is I take the first row from a and I pair that with the first column from B, okay? So I'm always going to take rows from the matrix on the left and columns from the matrix on the right. And this is why that those inner dimensions have to match for the product to be defined. And they do here. So I have three elements in this row and I have three elements in this column from B. I can pair them up together multiply them, and then take the sum of all those products. And that's exactly what it, this is. So I pair up the element A sub 1, 1 with B sub 1, 1. That's this uh, term right here in the sum. And then I pair up A sub 1, 2 with B sub 2, 1. That's this pairing in the sum. And finally, I pair up A 1, 3 with B sub 3, 1. And that's this pairing in the sum. So I make all of these products and then sum them together. When I do this, I'm going to get a single number, and this is the number that's in the product AB. Okay, and then for example, if I wanted to compute this entry right here in the product AB, 
Well, it is in the second row, second column of the product matrix. So I'm going to take the second row of the matrix on the left and pair it with the second column of the matrix on the right. Okay, And you see I pair the first two elements. I pair A21 and B12. And then I pair up A22 and B22. And then I pair up A23 and B32. Okay, I do all three products. Add the sum, add, add them all together, and get a single number, and that's the entry for the product matrix A B. Okay, so it continues like this. For example, to get um, this element right here in the product matrix, it is in the first row but third column of the product. So I'm going to pair up the first row from the matrix on the left with the third column from the matrix on the right and then do that uh, well we give it a name we call this a dot product okay whenever you take a row and multiply it times a column in that order a row on the left times a column on the right we call that a dot product and a dot product always ends in a scalar Okay, and these scalars are the entries in the product matrix. Okay, so let's actually do this. Let's try this out. Find the product of A and B. So first, I'm going to write them, put them next to each other. So we have one, two, three, four. We usually don't use a dot to denote matrix product. You can, but it's usually left out. And we just juxtapose the two matrices next to each other to indicate multiplication. If you want to do addition or subtraction though, you definitely need to put the operator in between. But with multiplication we leave it out, just like you know you have something like 3x. There's, you don't need a dot there. Okay, um, now let's see here. Is this even defined? This matrix on the left is 2 by 2. This matrix on the right is also 2 by 2. The two inner numbers match. They're both 2's, so this is defined. And then the product will have dimension matching the outer numbers. So the product will also be 2 by 2. OK. How do I get the product? Well, there's going to be four entries in it, right? And this first entry is in the first row. Remember, we always do row column. And the reason is because we take rows from a matrix on the left and columns from the matrix on the right. It kind of reminds us of that. So I'm going to pair the first row with the first column. I'll do the uh, arithmetic over here. I'm going to do 1 times 5 plus 2 times 6. Okay. And that's going to be 5 plus 12, that's 17. Is I, did I do that correct? Yeah, 17. OK, now this element is in the first row, second column. So I'm going to pair up the first row with the second column from the matrix on the right. So I'm going to do 1 times 6 plus 2 times 8 which is 6 plus 16, which is 22. All right. OK, now this uh, next blank is in the first, sorry, it's in the second row. We always go row column, right? Second row, first column. So I want to take the second row and pair it with the first column. And I'm going to get 3 times 5 plus 4 times 7. Let's see, that's going to be 15 plus 28. Um, and let's see, what do we get here? We get 43, right? OK, so this entry is 43. Finally, 
this last entry in the product matrix is in row two and column two of the product. So we're gonna pair up row two from matrix A with column two from matrix B and we're going to get three times six plus four times eight. Let's see, three times six is 18, four times eight is 32, add these together, eight and two is 10, carry the one, okay, we get 50. So this last entry is 50. All right, and there we go. There's the product of two two by two matrices. Let's do some more examples. Remember, whenever you're confronted with a product of matrices, you always need to check to make sure it's defined. Okay, so let's see here. This is a this matrix on the left. It's a it's a row vector. That's okay. It is it has dimensions one by two, one row, two columns, and the matrix on the right is two by two. Okay, so these two numbers match, so the product is defined, and the product will have dimensions of the outermost numbers. It will be one by two. So it will be a row vector. One row, two entries. All right, so how do we compute this? Well, it has two entries. Uh, the first one is in the first row first column. So I'm going to pair up the first row from whoops, the first row from the matrix on the left with the first column from the matrix on the right and I get what do I get? I get negative 9 times 1 plus 5 times 0 which is negative 9. So this is negative 9. And then this entry here is in the first row second column. So of course I'm gonna pair up the first row, the only row with the second column. And I'm going to get negative nine times two plus five times three, which is negative 18 plus 15, it's negative three. Let me get rid of that little mark negative three. All right, and we're done. Let's look at this next product. Okay, so we have a two by two matrix times, now remember it's always row column, so this has two rows and one column. The inner two numbers match, so the product is defined and the outcome or the product will have dimensions of matching the outer numbers, these two numbers here, two by one. Okay, so it's going to be a column vector. Okay, um, has two entries to get the first one the first entry on, on the top here will be in the first row, first column. So I take the first row from the matrix on the left, pair all the entries with the first, the, the one column from the matrix on the right, and I get five times one plus negative three times two, which is five minus six, which is negative one. Okay, so you can, um, if you just do this a little bit slowly and methodically, you can, you can actually do this in your head. Um, let's see here. So to get the next entry, I take the second row times that column, and I'm gonna get one times one plus two times two, which is one plus four, which is five. And there we go, there's our product. Okay. An automobile parts manufacturer lists the sales in thousands of certain products from three plants for the prior quarter. 
During that period, mold motors sold for $584, mufflers sold for $240, headlights sold for $90, and transmissions sold for $974. Okay, so let's see here. This table tells us how many products in each of the four categories that each uh, plant manufactured. Uh, so what we want to do then, well, let's continue reading on here. Part A, write a matrix multiplication to find the total sales from each of the three plants. And part B asks us to perform the matrix multiplication to find the total sales from each of the three plants. Okay, now, now this is really the key um, idea here. We want to find the total sales from each of the three plants. So, for example, to find the total sales for plant A, Plant A produced 75 motors, 62 headlights, 50 mufflers, and 61 transmissions. So to compute their total sales, what we need to do is pair each of those quantities with the of, of different items, quantities of different items with the price per item. Right? So it's a motor, it's $584 per motor and they produced 75 motors. So we got to multiply 75 times 584 to get how much revenue plant A generated from producing and selling motors. And then we got to take the number of headlights, 62, multiply that by the price per headlight, which is $90. That will give us the total sales and headlights from that plant, etc. And we do this with the mufflers and transmissions, add it all together, and that's going to give us the total revenue that the plant generated from all four categories of products. Okay, so uh, we need to formulate this as a matrix product. And it seems to me that what we want to do is typically just try, want to leave this table of data as is if possible. Sometimes you can't always leave it just as is and you might have to like take the transpose of the table. That's just simply where you turn the rows into columns. Okay, so like the first row would become the, the first column. So sometimes you need to take your data and transpose it into a different type of table so that you can do the matrix multiplication. But here we won't need to do that. Um, so let's see, let's write this out. The first row is 75, 62, 50, 61. The second row is 54, 70, 44, 48. The third row is 59, 40, 53, 49. Okay, so this is, let's see, this is a 3 by 4 matrix. Now, whatever we put over here to the right, uh, we could put a matrix over to the left too, but um, let's just assume we can put something to the right maybe for now. Whatever it is, it has to have dimensions of 4 by something. And what are we after? We're after the, the, the total sales from each of the three plants. So really we want three numbers in uh, as the result of doing this multiplication. We want the total sales for plant A, plant B, and plant C, just these those three numbers. So now I think what I have to do to match up these quantities with the price per item is put a matrix here with the prices. Okay, let's see. And this so this will be 4 by 1. And then the yeah, so these numbers will match. The product will be defined and then the outcome will be 3 by 1. It'll be three numbers, the the total sales. 
So let's see, the, the first number in this column should be the price per motor, which is 584. So we'll put 584 here. And then the next thing, so this is the motors column, uh, motors, headlights, mufflers, and transmissions. Okay. So what is the price per headlight? Um, those are $90. So I want to put 90 next. What is the cost per muffler? It is $240, so that comes next. And then the price per transmission was $974, so that comes next. All right. Okay, and that's part A. It just asks us to um, figure out how to write this as a matrix multiplication that will give us what we want. Okay, part B is we actually need to perform the matrix multiplication to find the total sales from each of the three plants. Well, um, these are kind of big numbers and I'd rather not do this out by hand. Uh, so I think we'll have the calculator do this computation for us. So let's see here. Actually, before I do that, I need to reduce that. Okay, so yeah, I want to do this matrix multiplication. And I've already gone ahead and put these matrices into my calculator's memory. So if I go to second and then matrix, and uh, I hit one for A, and then enter, yeah, so you see that in my A matrix is, uh, matches the table, the data in the table, and it matches the matrix I've written here for part A. And then my B matrix will be this column vector. It's a four by one column vector matrix. And let's see, let's just double check that I, that I did that correctly. B, I stored that, I stored that in matrix B. Let's see what we got in there. Yep, we've got 584, 90, 240, 974. Okay, so what I wanna do is the product A times B. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna recall the symbol for A, and then recall the symbol for B and hit enter. And there we go, the result is a three by one matrix, um, 120,794, um, 148, And then finally, 98,502. Okay. Okay, now we gotta be careful here though because, can get rid of the calculator now. We gotta be careful though because recall that the, this first table here listed the sales in, in thousands. Okay, so, Plant A didn't just produce 75 motors during the quarter, uh, the prior quarter. They sold 75,000 motors. So um, really every single entry in this matrix should be multiplied by 1,000. How can we denote that? Well, we can just put a 1,000 out front because we can do scalar multiplication of matrices. And then <clears throat> whenever you have scalars uh, with a matrix product, what you can do is you can always take all of the scalars, like for example, I could have a scalar here. I could have say something like two times this column vector, two times all the entries in this column vector. And then um, we're not, I'm not going to prove this or anything. You can 
uh, just kind of, if you want, you could look at this and convince yourself that this is true, but it is true that you can always take any scalars that appear in a long product of matrices and just bubble them out to the front. In other words, this would be two times a thousand, okay, times the product that we got the other way, uh, just doing the, the, the product of the matrices. But, uh, I, of course, I don't have, need a two there, so, whoops, I'll get rid of that. Um, put those bars back in. Oops. Um, there we go. Okay, so, but we do need this thousand out in front, and so this should have uh, a thousand out front here. And, you know what, that's fine. We could just report our answer that way. We don't have to rewrite the column vector with a whole bunch of zeros tacked on, three zeros tacked on to every single number. But so, but be aware though that the answer is that the the sales for plant A is not one hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred ninety four dollars. No, it's one hundred and twenty million seven hundred ninety four thousand dollars. Okay, so. Well, for completeness sake, let's just write it out. So it'd be 120,794,000. The next one would be 95,148,000. And the sales from plant C would be 98 million five hundred and two thousand dollars and there we go okay and this concludes section 2.3 on matrix operations